Hey, what's up, Camry Street people? Mr. Boylan in the house. Today, we are going to express the arrangement of electrons in atoms through electron configurations. But let's break that down a little bit. Electron configurations is sort of a big, complex task. First thing we need to do is better understand the electron cloud. So breaking it down here, we're gonna first define an electron orbital and then dose. And then number two, we are going to explain how electrons are arranged within the electron cloud using the concept of orbitals. So basically here, we're gonna try and better understand the electron cloud. And to do that, we need to know what the heck an orbital is and how are electrons arranged in those orbitals. Now, throughout this video, I'm gonna use this as my model of the atom, where this teeny tiny blue dot represents the nucleus and all of this emptiness represents the electron cloud. And we'll get to all these fun things. Please stay seated. So as it turns out, the electron cloud consists of a complex arrangement of orbitals within a series of main energy levels and energy sublevels. Now it was Erwin Schrodinger who used the hypothesis that electrons could have a dual wave particle nature to develop what we call wave equations to describe electrons. And the answer or solution to those equations describe the shapes of the orbitals. So orbitals are just three dimensional regions around the nucleus that indicate the probable or most likely location of the electron. Now to help you understand this idea, of an equation to describe a region of space, I'm gonna use a very simple equation that we can use to describe a line. One of my favorites from math class, y equals x squared. Why do I love it so much? Because you can make parabolas. Ooh, baby. That's a terrible parabola, but we're gonna go with it anyway. Woo, parabola. Woo, parabolas. Woo. Again, the idea is just, we can describe a shape, in this case a parabola, based on an equation. Now, as you take a look at your screen, orbitals are three-dimensional regions of space. And so we need an equation that's a little more complex than y equals x squared. The same idea applies. We could write an equation to describe this spherical shape. We could write another equation to describe this crazy dumbbell or peanut-shaped orbital. Bottom line, orbitals, three-dimensional regions of space, we will most likely find an electron. Now it's important to note that you can only fit a maximum of two electrons in any single orbital. Now we have to remember that electrons have a negative charge and two like charges will repel. So how is it even possible to fit two electrons or two negative charges into the same three dimensional region of space? Turns out electrons like to spin. <laughs> And there are two ways you can spin. Clockwise, yeah! Counterclockwise, woo! And it turns out that by spinning in opposite directions, you can get two like charges in the same general region of space. Now, it turns out these orbitals are organized into main energy levels that indicate the general amount of energy and distance from the nucleus that a given electron in an orbital possesses. So again, as you take a look at your screen, we're gonna talk about how these orbitals are organized into a series of main energy levels. And a couple of important things to keep in mind about those main energy levels. Take a look at the image on your screen and you've also got this in your notes. Keep in mind the further you move from the nucleus, the greater amount of energy those electrons possess, but also note the further away you get, the closer those energy levels become. And recognize that although this image only shows six energy levels, hypothetically, we could have an infinite number of main energy levels. Now, there's a really easy way to tell how many main energy levels an atom of a given element has. You simply need to take a look at the row or period that the element is in on the periodic table. So if it's in the first row or period, it will have one main energy level. If it's in the second row or period, it'll have two main energy levels, so on and so forth. Now, within those main energy levels, we have energy sublevels. And those sublevels indicate the different shapes of orbitals that exist within the same main energy level. And those different shapes of electron orbitals or sublevels are indicated by letters. The s orbitals have a spherical shape and there's only one s orbital in any given main energy level. 
And as we've learned to use our periodic table to tell us more about orbitals, you should note that the first two columns on the periodic table correspond to the two electrons that can fit in that one s orbital. Here's a visual for what an s orbital looks like. It's a sphere. And again, it will correspond to the first two columns on the periodic table. P orbitals make up another type of sublevel. They resemble dumbbells in shape, and you can have a maximum of three p orbitals in any given main energy level. And those correspond to the last six columns on the periodic table and the six electrons of those elements respectively. So here are our dumbbell shaped orbitals, one in each of the different three dimensional axes, one in the x, one in the y, one in the three dimensional z. Because again, we have to remember that electrons have negative charge and a bunch of negative charges are not gonna wanna hang out in the same location. They're gonna repel one another. So these orbitals are oriented to keep those like charges as far away from one another as possible. Again, p orbitals correspond to the last six groups or columns on the periodic table. Which brings us to the d orbitals that often resemble clovers, and there are five d orbitals in any given main energy level. And these correspond to the transition elements on the periodic table. Boom! d orbitals look kind of clover-esque, most of them. Again, you can only fit two electrons in each of these orbitals. So the d orbitals together can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. Again, they correspond to 10 groups that make up your transition metals. Now, orbitals with higher energy than the d orbitals are labeled f, g, and so on in alphabetical order, but their shapes are a little more difficult to represent. For example, here are the seven f orbitals that correspond to the inner transition metals on your periodic table. And lastly, keep in mind an important vocabulary word here is valence level. This is the energy level that is the outermost energy level. It's the level that interacts with other atoms. And it's important for determining how that atom will interact chemically. Very much like the skin level that we have. That's the level of our bodies that interacts with our surroundings. It's the outermost level. And once again, your periodic table is going to come in for the save. The group number will easily help you determine how many valence electrons an atom has. For example, elements in group 1 will have one valence electron. In group 2, they will have two valence electrons. In group 3, they will have three valence electrons. Group 4 will have four, so on and so forth. Alright, that brings us to an end for today's video. Check out the references below. Have a fantastic day.